All right, here we go. Coach Doc Kelly, head coach, Lords University, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so pull it in here. You can't help but see. This is the first time I've been here. Oh. Shame on me. Okay, <laughs> you've been around for since 2015. Yes, sir. Right? Pull it in here. Can't help but notice the architecture, and we're sitting in the Franciscan Center. Yes, sir. Just before we get into the program and you and all that, can you tell us a back background on what this place actually is and how it came about? Yeah, so this is, uh, Lord's is a, first of all, thank you and welcome to Sylvania. I'm glad to have you. Lord's uh, is a Franciscan university, and so uh, um, Sister Mother uh, um, Adeline, hmm. she, what she wanted to do was build a facility that mirrored uh, what was over um, overseas and so a lot of the original pieces that you see are actually not from here they're hmm. from overseas you're looking at the original works and so um, this place is immaculate when you, when you walk around and you can tell I mean this is a uh, uh, we, we have embraced the Franciscan tradition here and the sisters who live on the back porch of the campus still um, and, and, and the four pillars you know, I'm, I'm going to get into all of that that they stand upon, but we still are operating on those four pillars. And it's really, uh, it's, it's that what, what, what grasped my attention when I came here for the first time myself and not expecting to see what I saw with my own eyes when I got to Sylvania, Ohio, because what I thought I was going to see, I didn't see. And so I tell everyone, whether it's recruits or parents, friends or family, when you get to Sylvania, when you come to Lord's University, it's not something that can be explained. It can only be experienced. And so it's here. I'm grateful. And, and, and they, you know, added um, athletics uh, probably 12, 15 years ago. And, you know, we're grateful that they decided to add wrestling. And so that's how I got here. And, and, and I'm grateful for what, they, for what they've done for us. So let's talk about that. You, you start, uh, start up the program from scratch in 2015, right? Yes. So you've already talked about what kind of attracted you here. Te do, do me a favor. You're nine years, you're starting nine years, uh, or eight, eight past you, right? Talk to yourself eight years ago and give yourself some advice on what you just oh, went through over the last that's, eight that's, years. That's, that's really good. So I... I you know, I, I would I would tell myself that that I, I you know what you have no idea the the energy effort and the, the the sweat and blood it would take to start a program in Northwest Ohio from scratch. It you, you not only got to have a vision, you have to have the ability to sell the vision, and then you, you got to believe in it and sell everyone you encounter on that vision, even. If you don't have, so you have to believe. You got to believe. You have to see it before you see it. And um, if you just take, stay on the right path. Don't take any shortcuts, and know that all of the all of the resources you need are already here on the ground. And that was a big part of, of why I came here. Was you had to come where the talent was, and the talent is here in the state of Ohio. And you don't have to go outside of these borders, although we do. Uh, with Michigan being so close, and 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 we've gotten. To, talented kids from other states, but everything you need to be successful is going to be right here. If you just focus here in your front yard and build it from there, then you'll be able to go out and cherry pick some, some other places that, that, you know, to go and get. But everything you need to structurally build a program is here. And it won't be easy. There'll be some days. The winters are going to be rougher than you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> and uh, the, the, uh, autumn is going to be the best season you've ever witnessed in your life. And the people are gonna be just as nice as they were in North Carolina when I was born and raised. And, and so that, that, that's what I would tell me, that, that journey, I mean, I look back eight years, it, it's been, it's, it, you know, I've had good days, I've had bad days, but just stay in the course and believing in, in, in what, we, what we drew up, that it was gonna, gonna come to pass and to watch it come to pass. We likened it to getting a plane off the ground, that it takes more energy to get the plane up in the air than it does to sustain uh, having the plane in the air. And so it took us three or four years to get in the air, and, and, and hopefully we're just now getting to cruising altitude where we can take our seatbelt off and enjoy this journey a little bit. So uh, we never get complacent with where we are, and it's all about um, the, the next destination, the next journey. Keep building on what we have um, so that we never theoretically ever um, have to... Uh, 
uh, reload. We just continue to just retool what we have and keep it going. And so for, for eight years going into nine, it's been an unbelievable journey and, and, and grateful. Excited going into year nine as we were going into year one. You, you mentioned recruiting in your backyard, recruiting in your home state. Uh, it's interesting the evolution that I got to see personally with my boys as wrestlers and both of them in Columbus, Ohio, wanting to go D1 or bust, right? Um, how do you, is that even a, a hurdle that you have to overcome in the recruiting process? What, what what are what are some of the things that you would say to? Because I look at your roster and you got some big names on that roster. <laughs> right, These right. guys are monsters in the state of Ohio. They aren't right. like, you know, guys that yes. didn't qualify, right? Yes, so yes. so how are you getting the point across to come to Lord's University, which happens to be an NAIA school? That's that's a fantastic question. So you're you're right. First things first, the elite guys are the elite guys. I don't care if you're Division One, Division Two, Division Three. NAIA, JUCO, the elite guys are the elite guys. And um, that's just a matter of just blooming and blossoming where you plant it. it is, if, you're, if you're elite, you're elite. I don't care where you are. And so, you know, I wrestled at Division I, so that's just the mentality I have. Uh, I coached 16 years at Division Two. I know all about it. And we're going into year nine here at NAIA. So people always ask, hey, what's the difference between D1, D2, D3, NAIA does? To me, there is no difference. It's 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 just the quality of athlete you get and, and how you coach them. And so, um, you know, we've had student athletes that uh, went Division One and trans back transferred back to us. Mm -hmm. They're still Division One athletes in their year. So, it's it, that's all a mindset, and uh, it's, it's how you treat it, how you approach it. And um, so, we don't we don't really kind of cater towards. We're gonna get to be, we go out and try to get. That the characteristics we look for, there are only two. We, we like guys who, uh, number one, we're going to work hard. Because <laughs> you get a room full of guys who work hard, you look around, you, you, you start to think, this, this, this feels like a Division One room. Where am I? And then the second characteristic is we look for the guys who hate to lose. You get those guys, they're going to stay and work extra because they hate to lose. Get a room full of competitors who work hard and hate to lose. That's the same Division One I, I was in room when I was in when I competed. When I coached him for four years, the same one I was in 15 years of Division Two, the same one we run here for nine years in NAIA. So um, it's, it's all about, and when you get on the mat, it's, it's proven. You know what? If you're wrestling Division One guy, go out there and show him. There's no difference. It's fine line. So it's, it's um, and, and here, being in the state of Ohio, the, the wrestling is elite here. So, man, you get guys who maybe didn't even qualify for the state tournament. And they can come turn up be national qualifiers and all Americans for you. It happened for us. Mm -hmm. uh, I look at myself. I never qualified for a state tournament coming out of high school. I only wrestled two years in high school. Wrestled the Division One. Wrestled the Division One national tournament. Wrestled Eric Guerrero, giving him the toughest match he had at the Division One tournament in '96. Like, and he's a good friend of mine. We still joke about that to this day, but. You know, it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from. It's what Matt, what, what you do that day. That's what I love about wrestling. What you do that day is, is what proves who you are. There is there is something to be said about the sport of wrestling. Uh, if you when you remove yourself after being an athlete, you know you're still immersed in it. In fact, the coach coaching is probably harder than being an athlete. <laughs> yes, but yes, when you yes. when you remove yourself years later. The lessons that the guys learn at NAIA are no different than that, what they learn yes. at, 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 at UNC. Exactly. You know, so there's that great equalizer, yes. right? And guess what? The, the, the goals are still the same. Yes. I want to be a national champ. I want to be an All-American. I want to just get better. Exactly. And, the state, and, and so wrestling uh, affords that no matter what level it is. Yes, right? yes, yes. One of the things that I like to, to, to harp on a little bit is opportunity. Because, again... In the state of Ohio, some of these guys, they, they're saying, I'm going to Michigan. I'm going to Ohio State. I'm going to Penn State. I'm going. There's, that, that, there's a ton of depth. Yes. The guys that just love wrestling, mm -hmm. but maybe they didn't place or maybe they didn't qualify, there's still a ton of opportunity out yes. there. And oh, by the way, they're going to get a degree, right? Exactly. So exactly. talk about the opportunities that uh, that you can provide for them here. Yes, I mean, and, and you just hit the nail on the head. Is 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 you have opportunity. You know, you you, you can go big time and find yourself too deep, three deep at a weight. 
you, you come to a place like Lord's where you're making an impact right away. And you know, one thing like I learned from John Smith is, is it's all about expectation. And uh, I, I heard him say this many years ago, probably 20 years ago, and I held on to it. But he said, you know what? Everybody talks about, you know, can you, can you, what, what, how do I get freshmen to come in and, and be uh, uh, dynamic? How do I come in and wrestle well? He said, it's all about the expectation you put on them. There's no law saying you can't come in and be great from year one. So, you know, wherever you go, if you go somewhere in Division One or, or uh, program, you don't have an opportunity to wrestle right away, man, a place like Lord's is perfect for you to come and make an impact right away. And the media loves it here when you make an impact right away with the sport. And that's just one of the reasons why I wrestle, too, because I'm an individual person. And, yeah, I played, growing up playing group sports, and they play on good group teams. And I finally said, you know what, I, I want to participate in the sport when winning and losing depended on me. And so that's what got me into wrestling. Said, if I'm not going to win, I want to be because I didn't do something, not because somebody else didn't do something. They didn't have the passion, didn't care the way that I care. And so that, that's, that's too what I love about wrestling. It's a team sport, but it's really individual. If you do what you do individually, the team stuff takes care of itself. But if you do what you do individually and, and wrestle the best of your ability, man, great things are gonna happen for you. And, you. and you can't do that unless you put forth your best effort. And the things we talk about, effort, hard work, if you do those things consistently, practice, good practice habits, in fact, here we don't say you practice, perfect practice, because practice doesn't make perfect in wrestling, perfect practice. You, you practice something wrong here, it's gonna cost you in a match. You gotta practice it right, whether it's a high cross, low thing, high thing, whatever we're doing. So come in here, make perfect practice, and opportunities galore. Those doors will open that you never imagined will open. And it's, you know, spreading the wealth. And to me, that's what keeps the sport of wrestling alive. That you can take those habits wherever you go and you can make the most of the opportunities given to you. We talked about how beautiful the grounds are here. Tell me a little bit about um, the facilities that we're sitting in. Yes, so we're sitting in the uh, Franciscan Center Gymnasium. This was, this was uh, afforded to us the first year that we started the program. President uh, spoke to us. Um, at that time, and, and, and um, you know, we, we said we needed a facility that had locker rooms because wrestlers, you need to get right off the mat and get right into the showers to keep skin, uh, you know, skin dysfunct to, to a minimum. And, and, and this, was, this was not uh, in their original plans because there were batting cages in here for softball and baseball, and the president was a wrestling guy. And uh, he, he said, you know what, you're right. And he moved the batting cages out of here. And he made this a wrestling facility, and this has probably been the best thing that happened for us because our offices are housed here in the upstairs portion. Uh, myself and uh, Coach Pisker has an office, and then we have an office for our GA and assistant out from our main offices here. We have two locker rooms below, one for the women, one for the men. There's a training room below, so a third trainer is here, housed here during the season. Um, and so we also have our own fitness little fitness center connected to uh, the offices uh, upstairs here so guys can get right off the mat and, and, and go over and get on for some aerobic uh, equipment, whether it's a bike, elliptical, um, uh, uh, the treadmills, there's some free weights over there, all housed in one facility where you never have to go outside in the dead of winter. Every wrestler knows if you gotta go outside, you're gonna lose your sweat. If you gotta go change and go somewhere else, another building. Here, we don't roll the mats in and up and, and out the next day. We don't move the mats. We're not in the mat moving business. The mats are out from October till March. Uh, you can come in, the facility's open uh, anytime. I'm here all during the season. I'm here up till 11 o'clock at night. Guys say, Coach, I want to get a workout in on Saturday. I want to get a workout in. Let me get out of church on Sunday. I'll be meet you there, let you in. So it's just the benefit of having your own standalone facility. I can't speak to what that what that does for for a program and having something to call your own. And then we also wrestle some of our dual meets in here. Uh, we, we wrestled over in the larger North facility during COVID when the space was an issue, but now that 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 has subsided, we are back here wrestling and we can get it loud and we have a home mat advantage. So to have Kevin here loud, let student athletes and people stand on the balconies, look down over the competition. They're packed in the stands, it's loud, referee can't hear himself, you go anywhere near your back, this place is roaring, and that affords us a home mat advantage, and we love it here. So I'm grateful to, 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 to the athletic directors that I had, grateful to the uh, support of the president that, that we had. So. Let's talk a little bit about the academics, right? So uh, 
to me not knowing what I'm knowing until I pulled up here and just getting to know a little bit more about uh, what's going on here. Is it intimidating to a recruit? What's school like here? Right. What, do we do we go to chapel? Do we go to church? What's it like here? Those, those are very good questions. Those are very because we're a Catholic institution, and that was a question when I before when I was in the process of, of interviewing for the job because I'm not Catholic, and I thought there might be an issue, and I, I said it out front. I I'm not Catholic. I'm not familiar with the Catholic faith. Uh, never going to a Catholic mass. Is that going to matter? And the sister said to me, she said, "Do you like soup?" I said, "I do." She said. Okay, she said, um, every soup that tastes really good needs something unique in it. And we're not a cookie cutter university where we want just Catholics here. We want to embrace all walks of life because that's what makes this place special. And we look at it as a big pot of soup and we embrace that. And she, she won me right there with that. And so that's why I respect the, the, the Catholic faith and what they stand for. Mass is not required here. Um, there are times that we may go to mass as a team if there's a special occasion. Maybe once a semester we may go there, but it's not required. We do leave that, that space and time of Mass going on for guys who do go to Mass. Uh, if we're traveling on the road and we're traveling on a Sunday, we allot them time to be able to go to Mass. We honor the faith, but it's not required here. The academics here are, are fantastic. Um, um, the, the degrees that we're offering, the support here is what makes this place special. And so um, it, it is, it, Lord's is a place, if you don't want to be successful, it's because you don't want to be. You're hiding. It's a place the professors know your name. You can't hide. Uh, you can't be a Fortnite champion and not go to class here. you got to go to <laughs> class here. If you're not going to class, the professors are going to be at the match. Uh, they come to the practice if they haven't seen you. They reach out to us and let us know if you're not here. We care about you. So we build a relationship with those professors So because we want you to be successful and, and in here, Success for us is not defined all by what you do on the mat because the success, if you're an All-American national champion, national qualifier, your names don't go up on our wall boards, your banners don't hang in our facilities until you get your degree because your athletic accomplishments mean absolutely nothing if you don't get your degree. You come here to get your degree, you're going to leave here with your degree. And if you don't make the All-American podium, you're going to leave here with your degree and you're going to be a better person when you left than when you came here because how you leave here how you acted, how you matured while you're here, and then how you impact the world when you leave here. What really matters to us most is producing quality young men who are going to go out there and change the world. And when they find out you're wrestling, they're going to know you have discipline, that you're going to have respect, that those attributes that made you a successful wrestler, that helped you and passion that you have for wrestling, are going to carry over and you're going to make an impact in life. All right, so team culture. Sounds like you've got, I mean, at leadership I don't know you, but right now, you know, we've been, we're about 15 minutes into this and I, I can tell you got a passion. Yes. You got, yes. you got, and you, you, I'm sure leadership from the top isn't an issue here. Yes, yes. Talk yes. to me about the culture and yes. how that trickles down. Yes, it's the, the culture of the team, um, that, that's huge for us because we will bypass talented guys if they don't have the right character here. We're not, we're not selling our souls to get somebody talented to mess up the chemistry of what we have in the program. And so we may not have the most talented roster top to bottom, but we have the high character guys here that make the, the team chemistry here impeccable. And here we have a team chemistry that's all about driving and making each other better. We talk about it. It's a biblical principle. We talk about it all the time. Iron sharpens iron. And you've got to have quality guys. And you know what? You may not be a talented wrestler, but you're a quality guy that when we're doing a set of five takedowns, if I didn't do three and four right, you're going to say, no, 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 do those over. Those don't count. You're not going to let me. You're gonna, there's going to be accountability because you have a high character in you. You're not going to let me cut the corners. And so it's here. Guys are going to do the right thing. Great character is when you do the right thing when nobody's looking. And that's what we're trying to build here. When, when, when Coach Kelly and Coach Pisker are not around to make sure you're doing the right thing, when you've got to make the right decision, right choices, and nobody's around to do it, that you're going to do the right thing. And, and those things are going to get recognized over the long haul. And, and, it's, and when you have teammates who are not doing the right thing, that you go and you check them and you say, hey, I'm not here to be your parent, but hey, that's not right. Hey, let's not do that. Because you recognize you're, rec you're representing us on and off the mat, in and out of season. You get in trouble, you're going to be a Lord's University wrestler that gets in trouble. If you're back home and do something 
uh, ridiculous. You're going to be a Lord's University wrestler that does it. So you got to recognize you're carrying that burden around of being a student athlete at Lord's University and you're going to be represented in that manner. Let's act like it everywhere we go. Even if we're not on the map, we're going to be a great Lord's University representative at Walmart. We're going to be, when we go and visit the high schools, when, we, when you're on vacation and you're spiking a ball in the sand in the, in the Caribbean, you're still going to be a Lord's University wrestler. So let's make sure that we have a great attitude about it and, and, and that we and that the character that we're showing, uh, because we're not in the business of, 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 of duping people into believing that we're something that we're not, that even on our down days, we're still going to hold our head up, still persevere, we're still going to have a positive attitude and exude that and carry that over to, 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 to our teammates, to recruits who come, and that's one thing that we say, we tell recruits, call, call our student athletes, ask them how it really is, we're not going to lie to you, no need to lie to you, because if I lie to you, I have to have a memory. And I don't have to have a memory. All I do is just tell the truth and just keep doing that over and over and over. And these guys, they buy into that and we love them for it. And, uh, and, and as a result, the reciprocity of that is outstanding. And they carry it on. It just goes on from one class to the next class to the next class. And it's a beautiful thing to watch when it plays out. Community support. What kind of support are you getting from the community around here? Oh, I love it. That's why I, I love Sylvania. I love Toledo. They come out. They support. Not only do they support our matches and come into art, they support uh, the endeavors that we do. When we've done fundraising endeavors, they've supported us tremendously. Can't thank them enough for that. The city of Toledo. Uh, I'm going to work over at the University of Toledo. We work over there as a team. We work their football games. They've been great to us. I, I, the people here are so nice. And I have to tell people sometimes who, who are from Ohio when they come visit, they're, they're not pretending. They're really this nice. They're, they're really this nice all year long. <laughs> and uh, I, I love it. And being, being from the South, I'm a yes sir, no sir, yes ma'am, no ma'am. Just, you, you, you just have good manners. And you, know, you don't call somebody by their first name. And, and it's Mr. or Ms. And, and, and so just, just having that kind of community here and, and the love you feel from the community, you know, it, it, that's what makes this place special and unique. And I, I live here, started off living here in Sylvania, and now I live in the, in the, in the, the Toledo sh Township, which is in between Toledo and Sylvania, technically Toledo. So, you know, I bike into work 4.6 miles. So if people recognize you when you're going in the stores and, and you know, if, if I'm in the schools and want to support my own children, play their sport, people, hey, how's the Lord, Lord? And I love that camaraderie that we have here in Northwest Ohio. And people say, well, how do you deal with the weather? You know what? You can tolerate the weather when you have a lot of people who have warm hearts. All right, Coach. I thank you so much for having me. This is, this is great. Do you have anything else you want to add? No, I just want to thank you because without people like you who are willing to take time out of your schedule and continue to promote the sport of wrestling, you know, we wouldn't be as successful as we are. So let me thank you on behalf of all of us in wrestling for what you do and, and all the hard work and the thankless work that you do behind the scenes to make this great sport what it is, a great sport of wrestling. So we appreciate you for it. And uh, let me just say anybody out there, Great Wolf Nation, we'd love to have you, male or female. Lords is a place for you. Thanks, Coach.